Welcome to Unbiased and on the Fence. I'm Shane, and I've got my sister and brother-in-law with us today. This is going to be awesome because they got a new book. So let me introduce them to you. Chadwick and Jelana Walsh, the brilliant duo behind The Imagination Code, the book we're going to be discussing today, inspires others by their own journey of healing and renewal. They embody the concepts they teach. Having spent more than three decades in marriage and development, a profound understanding of human connections, they have the power to transform how we think about love, healing, and personal development. The Walshes are renowned relationship coaches, authors, and speakers who have devoted their life to helping couples in navigating the complexity of the modern relationships. With grace and resilience, they share a passion for guiding others in developing healthy relationships and realizing their full potential through their highly regarded coaching program perspective writing, and captivating speeches. They encourage people all around the world to embrace the life-changing power of creativity, dialogue, and self-discovery. So welcome, you guys. Thanks for coming on. Hi. So we decided to do this today, you guys, because this is actually the anniversary of our brother's passing, and uh, she's got this new book release. We thought, why not get together, honor this time together, discuss this book, because uh, you actually talk about him in the book, so we'll talk a little bit about that, too. And uh, I'll actually drop a, uh, a link down below uh, of a slideshow I created for my brother's uh, memorial oh. service, so you can see some pictures of all of us and the family and stuff like that, because I forgot to pull them up here. So, <laughs> at any rate, <laughs> uh, let me pull up a picture of your book. I think it's awesome looking. Here it is here, uh, The Imagination Code. And uh, so, yeah, so you guys, the book was awesome. I read it and like, I just devoted like all these hours and got it completed in like two days now it's actually i love the format of the book the way you guys uh kind of have this back and forth a little bit with the different perspectives of the things you were going through i thought that was really cool about it i also thought it was cool that it's a workbook too so yeah. there's uh like things you can work through which in you know it's really for anybody that's that's the thing i loved it was so simple uh these concepts that are sometimes made so complex was broken down into these really simple forms and then uh, actionable, you know, so you can actually take what you learn, put it to use right away, right inside the book. So I love it, you guys. It's, it's a great idea. And I think even if, you know, if you're a couple going into this and you want to get the book, get two of them so you can both work through the workbooks together. I think it would be fun and, you know, add that little bit of kind of inspiring each other to keep going in the process of self-development, because that's really what it's all about. So the information that can help anybody is in that book. And I appreciate you guys for putting it all together in such a wonderful way. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much. We really enjoyed doing this book and working on it. It was a pleasure. It was like, our, it was fun for us working on it and just discussing topics and just really, it was, it was, it's us. It's yeah. what it is. It's a part of our, it's, it's our kind of our gift to humanity right. in a way. <laughs> did you did you find it, it like helps to actually go back over these things you've learned and then to present them to, so that you can present them to other people? It makes it to where they it really solidifies your own learning when you do that, you know? Yeah, definitely. I yeah. think, and two, you know, while we're writing the book, things would come up, you know? Um, one of the things, it's like anytime something in life, you, you face a challenge or an obstacle, you know, whereas in the past, I might look at that situation and just be frustrated about it. I'm able to observe myself. Why did that upset you? Why did you feel so much fear? Why did that affect you in that way to where I can dig deep, observe it and just see, okay, what's going on inside of you that, you know, maybe those are, those are to me signposts of some areas in your life where you can develop and grow and become better. So that oh, was pretty that. cool. <laughs> what, what I really liked about it, and we kind of talked about this off air, is that um, I, I came across a lot of things, lessons in your book that I had learned in completely different ways. And I think it's just cool to see how, you know, there's a completely different perspective. The way you you break it down in the book is much simpler. For me, it, it sort of the epiphany came from working with a lot of different people with the imagination uh, and the practice that, that I do. I try to get them out of their own imagination 
and into that higher imagination. So I really see the brain as two brains, like a left and a right. And a lot of times right. we'll let the worrying, the left part of our brain can only create from the past and past traumas and when things went wrong, right? So it's right. constantly, it's almost like letting a little kid on the imagination computer of your mind, right? And it's sitting there like looking at all the ways things can go wrong. Um, and then, you know, getting away from that and, and just allowing the imagination to pour through with the higher things the you know what I mean? And it's like you've got one that's sort of driven by fear and then one that's driven by love. Right. And, right. Um, and it's making that distinction there that you came across in a completely different way and you break it down really good in the book. But for me, it was like seeing it in my with working with my clients and stuff and seeing and then learning and then uh, sort of applying it to myself that, wow, we really do do that. We'll sit and worry about something and we're, we're using our creative power to create chaos for ourselves and we right. don't even realize it. So it's like you brought that out in the book, how like this is always running. <laughs> Your right. creative thing is our always run. You better learn the imagination code so you're applying it to your benefit. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So, so powerful. The other, the one of the things you just said that I kind of, um, I think of Seneca when he says that we often suffer more from our imagination than we do from reality itself. Oh, Sometimes we'll, 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 we will, I mean, rewind and replay and deal with past situations and not tap into the now, into the present, to eternity that's within us and see the, I mean, magnitude of greatness that's within us and what's ahead of us. Right. But just staying in the now is just such bliss. Mm -hmm. And I, I notice, I think, when we go through challenges or like, you know, even grief, going through the grief of losing, you know, we've lost a lot of people in our family and it's been very difficult and you know, I think that in that process of healing, your imagination can sometimes feel like it's tormenting you. So to be able to grab the the reins and 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 just pay attention to your inner dialogue. What are the conversations? Because your thoughts, your inner dialogue is directly linked to your imagination. And our imagination's always writing some sort of story. <laughs> so if your thoughts are negative, it's going to create negative conversations, negative pictures, negative movies, negative stories. But if you if you change your inner dialogue and just begin to pay attention to how you think, your imagination will begin to, you know, like, you know me, I, I worry. I've always been known <laughs> for worrying, right? Because you're always like, sis, come on now, you're worrying again, you know? And so <laughs> I've been that way since I've been young. It's like my brain is looking for something to worry about. And so I started paying attention to that and observing it. And I, I realized I have made more of my decisions in life off of fear than I did just living life and living in bliss and trusting that all things will work out and all things will be okay. And so now I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make a decision out of fear. I'm just going to walk this out without fear, without worrying. And so I've had to coach myself <laughs> with that and pay attention to my inner dialogue. And the minute I feel fear creep up is like, I'm going to choose not to think the worst case scenario in that situation. I'm going to choose to believe everything. And it always works out. It just does. It's, and you say that all the time. You're like, sis, it always worked out. It always <laughs> works out. <laughs> I think I got a little bit of that from Pops. You know, he always yeah. had that, that calm peacefulness about him about you know whenever things seem to get hairy he could be calm through it or whatever so right. i appreciate right. that from him <laughs> because mm -hmm. you need it a lot you know and and um in it i think most people notice that like over 99 percent of the things we worry about nothing ever happens you know right. what i'm saying i mean like i mean it's literally almost everything we worry about nothing ever happens you know and yep. it's like all the time we spend worrying on that staying in that fearful vibration and then you yep. start attracting that sort of thing to you because right. you're just always resonating at that, you know, right. just by default. Right. So many people do it by default. So I think that was great the way you, you know, just having that conscious understanding that you're doing that, mm -hmm. you know, you can begin to like pay attention to your thoughts like you talk about in the book, you know what I mean? And right. and, and, and writing out the, the little exercises you had in there really makes you realize how much you, you do that to yourself. All these programs that are running in the background. 
Right. You know? so, right. So, yeah, excellent job with that. And like I said, anybody can can relate. And um, I think the grief portion, a lot of people now, a lot of people are losing people, you know. Right. And it really helps to be able to pull out of yourself and um, just realize, like, it's painful for us being here and left. And, you know, we're going to miss right. those people. But for a lot of those people that were in pain or whatever, they're actually liberated from the body. You know, they're in a better place. Right. It's like having that higher understanding and using our imagination to, I guess, a lot of us. And I think you kind of brought this out in the book about the guilt that we'll feel. And we feel like it's almost like dishonoring to the person that passed away not to feel guilty. Right. Um, and and it took me having my own kid before I realized that about mom, you know, because, of course, mom lived like 20 minutes away. And there was a few times she called me to come out, you know, and I'm like, mom, it's like nine. I'm already falling asleep on the beanbag and stuff. Right. But after she passed away, I was like, oh, my gosh, all those nights I could have went and visited her. And, you know, yeah. and it just tore me up. But once I had my first kid and I was like, oh, man, that would be so torturous if my kid was right. torturing themselves over something like this, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. and, and just feeling that I just felt the chains break away, you know, like right. I lived with that for so long and I yeah. knew that would be the opposite of what mom wanted. It would be more honoring of her to think of the good memories and the wonderful times and things like that than to feel guilty about something as silly as being too lazy to drive over and visit her, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, and the other part of it is I have those moments, you know, where I miss Jeff, you know, our brother, and I will, it doesn't matter what the scenario is, when you know a person and you know their spirit and you know who they are, you can literally imagine them in any current situation where they're, they're, they may be gone, but if they were here right now, this is what he would say mm -hmm. if he walked in the room, you know, and we had Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving was Jeff's favorite holiday. And so um, some of his kids had come over and I just, it was like, I was missing Jeff, you know, cause I'm like, dang, it's Thanksgiving. But I literally closed my eyes and imagined what Jeff would feel like to walk in the room right now and to see us back, you know, cause we had moved back from Georgia back to right. Missouri and we're with his kids. And I just felt Jeff would be so proud mm -hmm. and happy that we're back here and we're hosting Thanksgiving and that the kids are here and he would be, I could hear his laugh. And like the minute I started just imagining Jeff in the room with us right then, it just brought healing to me. Cause I knew, you know, I, we know Jeff. So we knew exactly what it felt like to be in his presence, mm -hmm. especially when he's happy. And that brings um, relief when you're dealing with grief, just to kind of close your eyes and picture that person there what would they say right now in this moment mm -hmm. you know how would it feel to be in their presence again and when you stop and do that it feels so real you know it's like That's you're because really it is i mean it's i mean it's all purely energetic right it's like yes. when you think yes. of it is it really the meat suit you know what i mean not right. really right i mean that's not right. really who the people are right yeah. you know it's not that body that you actually fall in love with it's the essence of the person it's the spirit it's the soul of that person and, yeah. and that never dies so of course they live on through you and you can like reignite those energies by just thinking of those good memories and those are the times that i feel like jeff will come through or mom will come through is when i'm like thinking of a memory something another memory like will pop in my head you know so right. it's almost like if you can pull yourself out of the grief i know it's tough especially when you're hitting those first holidays like you mentioned the first yeah. Thanksgiving or Christmas, your first birthday, these things are so tough, you know, and it just brings right. back that rawness of it all. And mm -hmm. you just realize how new it is again. But just to think about a previous birthday when they were around or a previous Thanksgiving, I think that's great advice because then you can sit and just think right. about them in that moment and just allow them to come through. Even imagine them showing up and giving them a big hug, you know, all right. of that. It's almost like the same thing, you know, with the imagination when you imagine biting a lemon, right? You start right. salivating and stuff, you know, exactly. it's a real experience. Your body yeah. doesn't know the difference. So take a moment and hug your, your loved ones that are gone and just and feel that release and just connect up to them energetically because you can totally right. do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Powerful. Powerful. absolutely. You know, it's kind of like as we're saying this, we've we mentioned the word memory a lot, a lot of memories, memories. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a writer, um, Wayne Dyer, he once said that you have animals. They are this. Let's take a bee, for example. A bee, they create beehives and honey. 
ants that create ant hills and 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 colonies underneath the ground. He said, but humans, we create futures, which is becomes a memory to a degree. We, we we create these futures. We create these plans. We create these these instances. These great celebrations, like let's use Thanksgiving for example, and we look back at that moment as a memory, and it's a good memory. So we took take look at our purpose as humans to support one another, but also to create these wonderful futures, to create these timelines of beauty and strength and help and you know peace. Mm -hmm. That's really when it comes down to it. We're just enjoying what we've created. Yeah. And we kind of and we can select what we want to dwell on, you know, mm -hmm. where we want to live. And mistakes happen everywhere in life, but we can actually choose to say, you know what, that happened. And I learned from that. And now we're going to do better. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do better. And now we're going to do better, which is what, what the purpose of this book is. So people do better. They live better and get through tra traumatic situations and don't live with it every day as a burden. Right. But we create a new future through it. I love this. This is really, it brings us joy just talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like you can find an appreciation for the tough times you went through, you know, and I yeah. think, you know, when you look at like the Navy SEALs and the Green Berets and all that training that they go through, it's tough, but think of how strong they come out the other side. I'm yeah. always thankful for those horribly embarrassing, cringy memories where I said something, I was rude or treated someone unlovingly or something like that. It's, it's always the little things, right? The lady right. at the grocery store or something, you know, it's just something when I was young, you know what I mean? And it like haunts you, you know what I mean? And it's right. like, then I can be thankful and pre appreciate that. I'm so right. thankful that I learned when I was like a teenager not to be a jerk, you know what I mean? Because now right. I don't do that now. So you can right. turn, flip it around and, and find an appreciation, even in those cringy moments of little things you've done along the way that yeah. seem to feel like a different person, you know, when you think about it. I'm like, man, that just doesn't feel like me doing those things or whatever. Right. You know? But right. To, to almost appreciate how far you've grown, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. So true. Um, on on that topic, there's a part in the book where you talk about leaning into the pain. And I think a lot of people... Uh, the thought of a splinter came up as I'm reading this, right? Like, you know how like you can have a splinter and it's so annoying, you keep bumping it and it hurts and everything. But, you know, at least when you're a kid, you might not want to get it. You might not want to mess with it. You know, you're like, no, don't mess with it. Right. And you're telling okay. them and they're going to get it out and make it all better. But you're just freaking the heck out about it. Right. Right. And I thought about that, you know, and, and if you don't treat it, it can get infected and really grow into a lot more pain than just dealing with getting it out of there or whatever. So when you had the, the section or the chapter on like leaning into your pain, it made me realize it's sort of like the worry we just discussed. Right. How many years of pain is someone dealing with because they haven't really they didn't want to touch it? I, it's just too painful. I don't want to I don't want to deal with that. It's just too painful. But if they had leaned into the pain. Right. And really like dissected it, you know, it, a lot of times things just dissolve away or you'll find some deeper meaning in it or you'll just have a new perspective on it in general, you know, but we just right. don't want to face it. So I thought that was great about the trauma and everything. Do you have anything come to mind that you want to add to that? Section? Um, you know, one of the things we did talk about in the book was most pain is due to resistance. You know, something it's like, I don't want to accept this. I don't want to accept that this is what is, or, you know, and when you, if we looked at pain, everybody, nobody wants to be in pain, but if we looked at pain as a teacher, mm -hmm. as a friend, um, to show you what's at your core, what's inside of you, what it is that you might be trying to resist, um, pain can teach you so much. And a lot of times what we do is avoidance. We will, you know, find things to numb the pain, you know, mm -hmm. we'll turn to drugs and alcohol and food and other things to, you know, alleviate that pain. And then you end up compounding the problem because right. it's not going to go away if, if you, you know, turn to the treat it like the pharmaceutical industry does exactly. <laughs> Just put band-aids on everything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just to suppress and yeah. Right. But if you lean into it and just say, I'm going to feel this because you, you got to, there's an expression that says, feel it to heal it. You know, once you feel it, once you feel and sit with the pain and then you begin to observe it, 
then it will begin to teach you, you know, and then that connects with, I guess, the next, you know, next yeah. chapter that talks about suffering and then our emotions. And a lot of times what we do is we label emotions as good emotions, you know, good emotions are happiness and joy and, you know, feeling love and all these other things. And right. then we, we quote unquote say bad emotions like sadness and, you know, all of those things, but all emotions are necessary. Mm -hmm. Your emotions, we shouldn't be ignoring how we feel about something because that it's like, and we talk about this in the book, they're like signposts to say, okay, exactly. if you're feeling fear over that, or if that caused you to fear, feel a uh, sadness or whatever it may be, then start digging into that, leaning into why that feeling is popping up, because then you begin to pull back layers and you mm -hmm. can get to the root of where that actually came from, um, which leads into the subconscious, exactly. you know, so I don't want to get too far ahead. But. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. But it's all about the imagination code, because really the imagination is everything, even as I've had different gifts come on or or like uh, when Jeff, our brother, came through to me when I was making a slideshow. I, I've told this story before, but, you know, I was going to leave out his motorcycle scene in the video because I got to thinking this is going to be played at his funeral. Maybe that's inappropriate. Him like riding the bike and acting crazy. And I clearly heard him like over my right shoulder right here just as if he was watching me put this together he's like what are you talking about you got to put that in there you know just <laughs> you know just out of the blue i feel like i'm sitting here feeling all sad and then he pops in and i'm like what yeah so, so yeah and it was real it was real but it was like when i say it was in the area of the imagination it's like as if i would have imagined it but the difference is i wasn't imagining i wasn't thinking my brother, let me just have him pop in right now or something. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like you were saying about the Thanksgiving thing where you're actually thinking, like, imagine him coming right now. To You know what I mean? It wasn't like that. I was just about to take it out and he just chimed in, you know? Right. So, so it is the imagination um, can be this thing that we use. Like I said earlier, it's kind of like the internet, right? You can right. use it for bad stuff. You can use it for fearful stuff and you can um, to create something you don't want which yeah, a lot of right. people are doing subconsciously, you know, you were kind of, that's that next chapter you were talking about. And so much of it is subconscious that we don't even realize. So that's what I like about the book, uh, the imagination code, allowing you to sort of begin to unpack those things that you might not even be aware of, you know? Right. 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 Pretty awesome. Well, do you want to, well, no, you go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say regarding the subconscious, because it's it's always running, we we compare it to like an iceberg, right? So when you see an iceberg, you're when you see one, I remember we went to Alaska and we're seeing all these icebergs. But the thing is, you're only seeing 10 percent of that iceberg. The 90 percent is below the surface. And that's very similar to how our subconscious is, mm -hmm. you know you're utilizing about 10% of your conscious mind, but the subconscious mind is, is always running. It's on autopilot most of the time. And so you really need to pay attention. That's why it's important to pay attention to your feelings. And why did that trigger me? Why am I feeling that? And because that lets you know what's going on below the surface, because that's really what's running you is that right. subconscious, mm -hmm. subconscious mind, mm -hmm. you know, so it's almost like a dashboard at times, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, Oh, why am I getting triggered right now? It's like an indicator that something's going on, you know? And I think a lot of times, like in the new age community, um, you know, people tell you like, you know, just be happy and, and sort of suppress those feelings that you're having or whatever. But I feel like that's suppressing the divine feminine too, because, you know, you've got the side of you that's the nurturer, the lover, the feeler, and, and you're suppressing it if you're not allowing it to feel sad in that moment. You right. know, you want to change what's making it feel sad, not say don't be sad, right? So right. there's a difference and there's a way to, to, to go about becoming blissful without suppressing all of that stuff because it's it's more superficial if you just suppress it you know it's right, like right. moment by moment bliss that mm -hmm. you have to sort of fight to 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 get it to you know manifest in your life you know what i mean right right exactly yeah, yeah and simply saying that's feeling it yeah feel it see that and that's where you when you feel it and you're living through it you realize that you're kind of going against that old program mm -hmm. as, as joanna said earlier the subconscious is that it's that it's kind of repetitive in the background. Let's use a, a, a operating system of a computer. You know, that's running. It has to be updated. Right. If you're running on that old program, you'll have problems. It'll run slower. Yeah. So you, when you update your software, 
which is in our in our in our in the book that we're speaking of in reference to imagination when you update that yeah. you begin to refresh and get to you know life and love and healing going through that then it starts to function even in a much more powerful way and things start to manifest outside from that from that internal program that's going on so that's i love the fact that when we said this we were living the book as we were writing it mm-hmm. as we were writing the book chapters were actually being written real time this was <laughs> something we had in storage and yeah we're going to put this as we were writing this things were just happening and we, oh, we, we got to put that in there what just happened this was real time writing it was it was actually being written yeah. hot off the press right <laughs> I love that. And I noticed that too. It was very current. You you brought up some current world events and I was like, wow, this feels very current, you know, with um, oh, yeah, exam- right. some of the examples you used and everything. So I definitely noticed that, you know, I was kind of surprised by that, but yeah, it was, um, it was awesome just having t- t- sort of going on this journey with you, you know what I mean? Of like discovering it. And, and it's like the journey we all have to make. Like you were just saying, it's like that first step is like even realizing that it's happening because so much of it is just automatic for us. We're just running these old right. programs. I love that analogy because yeah. even our computers like that, right? We got like, I haven't used this app in like three years. Why am I still <laughs> right. running this? And it's probably like running in the background and you exactly. know, when you're not right. turning it on. Right. So it's like all that clutter that we, that we deal with, you know? So the book really helps you like start listing things and realize things and just consider things like, Oh yeah, I do do that. Don't I? Wow. I I tell myself that all the time, you know, or or whatever. So I really appreciate that part of it just for just the thought experiment of it. You know what I mean? Right. Well, and also I was just thinking about how a lot of times we don't even know, you know, you can inherit trauma (laughs) totally from, from, your ancestors and Mm -hmm. you don't even know why is that why do i have that phobia why do i have that you know why am i responding like that Mm -hmm. and you can inherit that and just as you can inherit it if you do the work to move past the trauma and to get healing and to rewire your brain you are not passing those genes that are filled with trauma onto your next generation Mm -hmm. you know because you did the work to heal in those areas of your life. So it's super important that we do the work. You know, we wanted to write a book that was not just your imagination is everything. I mean, Albert Einstein said that the imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attraction, you know, and it's as you begin to do the work and create the life you want, sometimes we think life is just happening to us. It's happening for us. You get to participate. You get to co-create with the creator in the life that you're going to have. So, but we're so busy running on autopilot and this is just what it is. I'm I'm a slave to my job and I'm a slave to my bills. And why? Limited thinking. Right. Limited thinking. So that's one of the things we teach people in the book with it is taking that limiting belief, those Mm -hmm. limiting thoughts and changing them into affirmations that you can begin to speak and declare out of your mouth and begin to, um, you know, change, change the world you have, right. and you know, by your work, not just your thoughts, but your words, mm-hmm. and to begin to declare those things. Right, right. It definitely plays a huge role because our, our words, we, we can even reference the Bible where in the beginning was the word and the word was, was with God and the word was God, mm-hmm. that everything was created. Yeah. By the vibration, word. you know, the, exactly. That, yeah. See? Yeah. So and that, yeah. that, that to be, when you speak these things, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. things were formed when God spoke and right. that makes us more, you know, in yeah. a way, man, we're playing with, we're actually co-creating with him as we speak. We're co-creating with the one within us, the source, Right. As we speak, so it's powerful to be participating mm-hmm. in that same realm. Man, I'm actually creating this. I'm creating the attitude. I'm creating the atmosphere here. I'm actually creating, right. Yeah, it's it's powerful way of you, living. You know what's so funny is because when I was when I was really into like Christianity and uh, religion, I would I would think that people that said they were God were being blasphemous. You know what I right. mean? Right. And then as soon as I realized. I was part of God. And I was like, wait a minute, isn't it blasphemous to think I can exist outside of God? You know what I mean? It's like, right. how can I exist of my own right. accord? Right. right. So it's yeah. like 
then you you know i kind of got this picture of god as like this tree and we're all sort of leaves and branches on that tree that yes. we are truly one in that sense you know the leaf isn't really the whole Right. Right. But if you look at it, it's almost got like the little branches in the trunk. It's almost like a fractal image of the whole tree, you know, and it's just mind blowing when you think of that, you know, that how much we are just like that. So it's like once you realize that, don't you want the other leaves around you doing well? And, you know, you would just you just treat everybody differently when you realize, like, we really are part of the same thing. You know, right. Right. And I think it's um the opportunity to be able to, there, it, it makes me think, I'm, I'm switching gears a little bit. I'm thinking about a song that I used to sing. Um, it's called When You Walk Into the Room. I used to sing it in church and it's talking about when, when God walks into the room, everything changes, you know, despair goes away. People are filled with hope. And one day I was, um, praying and meditating. And I started hearing that song, but I felt like it was almost like God was singing it to me. When you walk into the room, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And if we looked at it that way, that you can have chaos going on and you can walk and bring hope into the room. You can bring peace into the room. You can bring joy into the room because of the essence of who you are begins to radiate from you Mm -hmm. and you can change the atmosphere of a room when you do that inner work and begin to say, I'm not going to walk in and just carry whatever's in this room. No, I'm going to walk in and bring in love Mm -hmm. and joy and peace. And you can make that conscious decision to change atmospheres no matter where you are because of what dwells in you and you're radiating that love. Totally. Yeah. It's almost like that, that shift from, the animal reptilian brain, you know, the fight or flight part of our brain or that right. higher thinking, you know, you, you can be in that lower state or you can be in that higher state. And it, it's kind of like, you know, once your perspective switches, you realize like how much you were thinking all negatively about right. everything, you know, and then you can mm-hmm. having that shift from being a pessimistic person to being an optimistic person. You had a saying in the book um, that reminded me of my friend Cynthia C. Larson's How Good Can It Get towards the end of it. But it was something similar to like how you view life, um, uh, you know, just having that optimistic outlook on life. Right. You know, and, and I think that that's like at the core. That really is like at the core of it. You know what I mean? The, right. The right perspective, you know, to keep you on the higher track, to keep you in that higher mind. You know, because the lower mind is the fear and everything. And that's the less hopeful. That's the worry. That's things are going wrong. That's And then you're running these programs all the time, you know, and it's disturbing the quality of your life. Really? You know, if you're sitting worrying all the time, that's going to breed disease and things like that. That's exactly exactly what brings. It's going to manifest in the physical. You know what I mean? And I always tell people, if you want to feel more healthy, deal with that stuff and get rid of it. And you'll, you know, you'll breathe in that wonderful feeling of health and you'll just begin to feel healthier and that will respond in the physical for you. Mm -hmm. you Yeah. And look how much stress, what it does to the body, you know, most diseases start from stress. Mm -hmm. And so, and stress comes from how we're processing and thinking. So when you talk about the imagination that you're stepping into the realm of possibility, Mm -hmm. you know, and getting out of the, the program that's always running and say, no, I'm going to step into the now into the realm of possibility. And I'm going to create a different scenario, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and watch it play out, you know. Um, Lisa Nichols, I love her. She says, your life is a physical manifestation of the conversations going on in your head. So <laughs> your life is a physical manifestation of the conversations going on in your head. And mm-hmm. it's like, that is so true because how you're conversating as you are within is how your world will be around you. If you're negative sure. and you know, you're going to manifest exactly who you are in the world around you. So what you have to do is pay attention to change in this world within mm-hmm. here, right. within you, and then your world around you will change. And then the change starts with, and I love the steps we have. I'll give one step. The first step, which was stillness, is so key. Mm-hmm. Stillness. Mm-hmm. Because when we get into the imagination, I love what um, um someone has said this where the imagination is a conduit to the higher self, Mm -hmm. where it brings that place 
but the higher self never it's never goes never doesn't remember the past right we realize yeah. that our highest the higher part of you your higher self doesn't remember the past it's always in the now mm-hmm. it's always in the perfect because it's right? the creation which is it, it, happening exactly. now right yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't remember the past when you're connected when you're really connected to that it doesn't remember the past it stays in the now mm-hmm. and that's where when we're, we're in that moment of stillness you're outside you're of time the, basically exactly <laughs> you're stepping yeah. into eternity at that point right. and now then you begin to create right mm-hmm. then and there yeah and you're creating out of love you're creating and you're duplicating what's within you that peace that oneness that's that's so key i'm not gonna go through all the steps <laughs> you gotta read the book. Yeah, you gotta read. Hey, links down in the description, you guys. Yeah. So check it but out. That, that, that number one step is key. Stillness is key, and I could even quote the Bible where it says, "Be still and know that I am God." That makes it so clear. And there's so many books that often state stillness. Right. In, Bhag- in the Bhagavad Gita, there's so many references of stillness, mm-hmm. stillness, of quietness. Jesus portrayed it as well. He went up to the mountain. He was always, he'd always go away. He'd always go away from the crowd. He'd always get away from the noise and spend time in meditation. Yeah. I love how, um, you know, one of the lessons that just somehow messes us is like loving ourselves fully and completely. Yeah. And in the book, you talk about, you know, love your neighbor as yourself and that you had thought about the neighbor part, but you didn't think about the self part that much, you know? And it's like, I I came across the same thing and realized like you can't properly love someone else if you don't love yourself properly. True. You know, I mean, they are really connected because you begin to see yourself and other people. And if you don't like yourself, you know, you, you got to turn that into having compassion, right? You're like, I do that too sometimes, or, you know, and really like being honest with yourself. You're like, I wasn't paying attention yesterday when I was driving, I should probably not get mad that they're looking at their phone or or whatever. You know what I mean? It's all the little things that we can get mad about that we actually do too. Right. Right, right. Anyway. So it it is like, that's just, that was really cool to uh, hear that part in there, the loving yourself part. Um, yeah. And then you guys were talking about uh, this one fight you had. And I, it, there was this mic drop moment. <laughs> I got to tell you, where Chad, you know, there, you guys are having this fight, and Chad's like, "Do you like yourself?" Like in the middle of the fight, he asks a lot of this, and a lot of like, "Actually, no, I don't." And then he's like, "Well, how do you expect me to like you if you don't like you?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Mic drop." <laughs> and then she retorts. She comes back. She says, "Well, do you like yourself?" And he's like. Heck yeah, I'll spend all day with myself. I enjoy myself, you know. And so anyway, that was uh, that was sort of an epiphany for you, wasn't it, Lana? When when you realize yeah. you're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, and that that part of it, I don't know. Uh, you know, you'll have to read the book to see the the roots and how deep this went with the dislike I had for myself. It was it was pretty bad and. Much of it is subconscious. That's why it's in. That's why I think people hearing you talk about it will probably realize things about themselves that they're like, "Wait a minute, I think I do that too a little bit." Right. You know? Yeah, right. You yeah. Because well, I even I mean, did that, you know. And I know you. I grew up with you, but there was things you were going through that I'm like, I went through that too. Like there was one part you were talking about reaching the age of mom, right? And I had just because I just passed that a few years ago, right? So I did the same thing. Well, I live as long as mom and you know and i i didn't realize i did it until i heard you say you did i'm like i did that too like you just have this program i'm probably not going to make it as long as mom did and or i'll probably get cancer or what and we're just running these things on autopilot right so anyway i didn't mean to cut you off but that part was just fantastic because that's you can't deal with it if you don't know what's happening right so it's like once you realize it, you're like oh i'm doing that thing again once you see it you can't unsee it yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy that I'm 52 and I just started loving. I, I mean, I love myself now. Like I could never, ever, ever <laughs> say that. And I'm like, you're cool. Like, I love myself. Like, mm-hmm. I keep saying it now because I was never able to think that or say that. I just had I just disliked myself so much. And because I now love myself and and I I teach in the book how to use your imagination to show kindness and love to yourself because a lot of times what we do is we're pulling on other people to give us 
-hmm. what we're unwilling to give ourselves. Right. And that's love. It's like, oh, if they love me, I'll be okay. And then we go into relationships and marriage and we're pulling on that other person and we don't have any kind of self-love. Mm -hmm. And so it's super important that we fall in love with who we are because as that scripture says, the love your neighbor as you love yourself, as you love yourself, you, if you have no love for yourself, how will you love anybody else? Right. How will you extend that to anybody else? So I think it's really important that um, we do that work as individuals, because if everybody just loved themselves, every it, it would just change how people interact with one another. Yeah. It would all change if we would just simply fall in love with who we are and then give and love others from that that place mm -hmm. because we already feel so much love. You know, that's funny that uh, as I began to deal with that, I began to see myself as more of a character within this realm of life, right? And to make that separation from my soul and my character within the game with these strengths and weaknesses and things like that. And when you begin to love yourself, you begin to love your weaknesses in a way that you recognize them. You won't even recognize some of your weaknesses of, you know, like, I, I don't know, just something like... um I don't know, maybe you're not good at putting something together or something. And you just like embrace it, like, oh, I'm just horrible at, at doing that. But not really like sort of uh, using it as, as something you're saying about yourself, but just realizing that you have a weakness and that you can depend on someone else in that area and to, to understand you have strengths and weaknesses, you know, and, and to, right. to love yourself through them rather than it being something you're sort of beating yourself up about, I guess. Because right. exactly. it can become a negative affirmation if you're like, I'm horrible with blah, 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 right? right. <laughs> so right. it's not really like that, but it's like just recognizing like, oh yeah, I need to do something to make up for that or whatever, you right. know, mm -hmm. in That's a good. loving way. And then it makes you more loving towards other people because in a way things are so upside down you know you don't right. think it but as soon as you can begin to love yourself with those things then you begin to love other people through their little quirks and weirdnesses exactly. and weaknesses or whatever you know right yeah. exactly basically and i think i love what you just said because it's like we basically we need each other we're we're one in a way we yeah help yeah so you know if i have if i have inadequacies or if i fall short in some areas I have someone there to, that can help me and I can help them. It's just this continuous, beautiful cycle of just help and love and support totally. occurring in humanity. Mm -hmm. If we all had that mentality, we wouldn't have wars. We wouldn't have fights. We wouldn't have, you know, arguments. everything would be solved because everybody yeah. else on the planet would be looking out for you. You wouldn't have to look out for yourself. You know, exactly. What I mean? But the universe that's so well designed and so oh, it's, it's perfect and everything it does is that we still benefit even when things go the other way. We right. still grow from those situations, even when it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. It's still, there's a group that in, in all things, all things work together for the good to those who love God, mm -hmm. loving basically you, mm -hmm. loving others, loving the planet, loving mm -hmm. humanity. It all works together always. Mm -hmm. right. It's like the whole namaste thing, like recognizing the divinity in everyone else, you know? Yes. That, that yes. spark of God in everybody, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't treat God like that, right? Like some of the ways people right. treat other people is like, dude, he's got a little piece of God in him. I wouldn't really like exactly. that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, all the problems would be solved if we all could just be a little nicer, you know what I mean? It's amazing. Yeah. It goes a long way. Goes a long way. <laughs> well, we're going to end this with, uh, I'm going to play a... a, a a trailer for your book and we'll just end awesome. this out i uh have your uh your web addresses on the screen the imaginationcode.com and of course i've got links down below to the website as well as the book on amazon and uh thanks for coming on is there anything else you want to talk about or you got anything coming up you want to promote or anything like that um, oh well, we actually we starting a podcast yeah we will be starting a podcast soon but we're still working yeah. that out but yeah. it's coming it's coming so. yeah okay the information will be on the website though if people yeah will... absolutely yeah yes. awesome awesome well i appreciate you guys coming on i'm going to play that video now in a world where challenges seem insurmountable discover the key to unlocking your true potential Join us on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Learn how the power of the imagination can heal trauma and create your dream life. Transform your life with the Imagination Code. Are you ready to unlock the secrets within?
order now available at Amazon.